And the title of said journey is Under Trinomials Under Trinomials Subheading dash section three dash two factoring. What? Factoring, which means this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages. Here's what you're going to do for today. You know how to do this. If I have x plus 3 times x minus 4, and you use FOIL to figure out what that is as a trinomial, you would get x times x is x squared, correct? X squared. This gives you 3x. This gives you minus 4x. So put those together, you get minus x, correct? And then negative 4 times 3 is a negative 12. Yay? Yeah. Well, today, children, you are doing the reverse of that. You are going to be given the trinomial, x squared minus x minus 12, and you are going to have to factor it or break it into two binomials that give you that, which means you would get x minus 4 times x plus 3. Now, the question you have is, how do you do that? Thank you very much. Here are the quite simple, clear, and concise rules. Uh, you could think just reverse uh, factoring or whatever there, but let me make sure I got one that works. Is this right? Did that work? Yes. Here we go. Take a look at this one. x squared plus 3x minus 10. And your question you're asking is, how do we factor? And this does tend to get a little complicated as things go on, but you start off pretty easy. So you've got to figure it out an easy way, and then you get to the, I mean, do the easy stuff, and then you get to the hard stuff. All right, so here are, this is your thought process. Here is your process. Okay, the first thing is, if a trinomial factors, it's going to be a binomial. So you're going to want to make your binomial parentheses. So you're going to go boom, 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 boom. I don't like that. Oh, off center. What did I do wrong? Parentheses, 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 parentheses. Okay. Step number one. Step number two, okay, is just like you have to think reverse foil, really. The first thing you think about is what times what gives you the first term. And I'm going to run out of room here. Somehow I need to fix all this. So if you look at this, so the first thing you start with is this first term. There's only one way to get x squared by multiplying something together, and it is x times x. This has to be x times x. Okay, you're not going to write x squared times 1 because that wouldn't change anything. Hold on, give me a chance to, what can I grab that's kind of thick? I'll make it a little smaller. And I will then blow it up a little bit so I get Okay. All right. Now, here is thought process number two. Okay. Or number three, I guess it is. You have to basically do this. Think of all, and you'll get better at this as that goes on, possible factors for the last term. And again, this will be very slow and methodical right now, but later on you'll be like, okay, it's this, this, and this. So here's my last term. All right. You have to think about all the different ways that you can come up with a negative 10 by multiplying things together. And I'm going to write them all down. You won't have to do this for everyone. You could multiply a negative 1 times a positive 10. That would give you that. You could multiply a positive 1 times a negative 10. Correct? 
you could multiply a positive 2 times a negative 5, and you could multiply a negative 2 times a positive 5. I think those are all the possible ways you can. I don't think there's any other ones. Right? So there's four combinations there. With that being said, then step number four, we have to pick the one where when I can say that you add factors together. You get we haven't done this before, have you? The middle term of the trinomial. And I'll stop there just shortly so you can write that down. Here is the deal then, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you are gonna look at all four of these, and only one of them. When you add these two things together, will give you this. You need, when you add those together, you need to come up with a positive 3. Because that's, if you look at FOIL, that's what happens. Is you, add, you add the two, you add this times this with this plus this, which are those factors there. So you look at this. If I added these together, I get a positive 9, 10 minus 1. This one together, I get a negative 9. This one together, I get a negative 3. This one together, I get a positive 3. This is what I'm looking for. So these are the two numbers that go next to my x up here. Negative 2, uh, positive 5. And it doesn't matter which one you put with which. I can put the positive 5 there and the negative 2 there. But this is that trinomial factor. Again, it won't take you that long, but that is your thought process. And it gets a little more complicated, but we're going to do easy ones for right now because, well, you're just not that smart. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey, You're right. a sheep. All right. And you have to be careful because sometimes you forget about some of the most logical ones. You are a sheep. So we'll get a little more of each other that. X squared minus 7x minus 8. Okay. If you're to factor that trinomial, again, this is nice because you don't have as many options. There's only one way to get x squared, and that's x and x. If I think about all the factors of 8 to give me a negative 8, and you have to watch your negative signs, you could have uh, negative 4, positive 2, positive 2, negative, oh, sorry, do it the same way, positive 4, negative 2. And sometimes people stop there and they go, well, there's no way that works. But never forget about what other two factors. No, one, four, and two. One and eight. Negative one, positive eight. Positive one, negative eight. Which one of these groups will give me a negative seven when I add them together? Well, this will give me a negative one. two, positive two, positive seven, negative seven. So your answer is positive one, negative eight. Could you like put them in the different, could you select a negative eight and the other yes. one? Yes, they, they can be flip-flop or moved around as any way possible there. Let me see if they give you some other ones. Um, I don't know how far we want to go into this. How about this one? I'll give you a chance at this one. x squared plus 4x minus 12. x squared plus 4x minus 12. I'll give you a shot at that one. 12 has a lot of factors to it, but only one of them, when you add it together, is going to give you a part of the 4. Is it minus 12 or plus 12? Minus 12. But I said plus, and then put that. Wait, did I say it differently and wrote it differently? I did. I don't know. Well, then I might be making sense. Did it work out? Maybe I did read it wrong. No, I got it right. Gosh, you got something? X plus six times X minus four. Does it work? Yeah, I get X squared. When I add these together, do I get a positive four? Yes. Times them, I get negative twelve. 
That's as good. That's quite a difficult one, shall we? Now, well, you know, if you see something like this, if you see 7x plus x squared uh, minus 44, I have people that confuses them, but please know you are always, always, always allowed to move terms to different places. So, because you, when you need to do this, you need to write the descending orders of degrees. degrees. Degrees of terms, x squared should come first. How about that one? That one's not as easy. Taking a factor, I'll let you do that. Factors of four, ne five, factors of negative forty-four. Interestingly enough, I can already see it. Do you see it? I can't. Okay. Oh, wait, there is a hard one on here. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, I can. There's a couple of them. Wow. We'll do one hard one just for fun. Or maybe we shouldn't. We should. We should. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. And we ended up with Wade and Davis. Uh, X plus 11. X minus four. X minus four. You add those together, you get positive seven multiplied together, you get negative forty-four. You could have the minus four over there and eleven over there. It does not matter, but that does give you that. All right, now one special case here. Think about this. I don't know if this will come up here. Is sometimes you see this x squared minus four. You look at that and you say, well, that is not a trinomial. But in, in essence, anything that starts with an x squared actually is a trinomial because you would think of it like this, x squared plus 0x minus 4. Okay, But in order for you to be able to factor this, a, a binomial like this, two things have to be true. This has to be a perfect square, which means the same number times itself will give you that, which is x and x. There'll be a time when this won't have perfect squares. And this, actually three things have to be true. This has to be a perfect square. And it must be subtraction. If this was a plus sign, you would not be able to factor this. And you'll see why in a minute. Because when you do this, but what times what gives you a negative 4 when added together will give you nothing? What are the factors of 4? 2, 1, 4. 2 and 2. If you put a 2 there, 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative. When you add a negative 2 and a positive 2 together, you get nothing. So that's why there's a 0 there. Negative 2 times positive 2 is 4, negative 4. If this would have been a positive 4, you wouldn't have been able to do that because there's no way to get a positive 4 and have them cancel out to give you a middle term because the only options are positive 2 and positive 2 and negative 2 and negative 2. When you put those together, they don't cancel each other out because they're not opposites. So in order to do this, this has to be negative, just like this, um, x squared minus 81. Right now, you should be able to tell me the answer to that because it is simply x minus 9 times x plus 9. Now, if I give you this, x squared plus 16, can't do it. Unfactorable. It's already factored to its lowest terms because it cannot. It has to be minus. So, blah, blah, blah. All right. What I have then, ladies and gentlemen, is another worksheet.